Yo, what up, guys? We're back. This is 2020. This is Random Rants with Polly Shore. We got new rants, all new year, all new rants. Come on out, Polly. Let's go, do go, the go, thing. Go, go dance. Dude! Go to the back. Stop, stop, stop. Every time we do this, you guys stay out here too long. You gotta go to the back. What the fuck? Play the music again. Play the music. Oh. I don't know if you guys saw this. Stop the music. I don't know if you saw this. I got this in Russia. It's oh, wow. Isn't that cool? Oh, that's so cool. That's Russian. That's Russian. That's Russian. Play the music, motherfuckers. Play it. Play it. All right, that's it. Cut, 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 cut. What's up, you guys? What's up? Welcome back to Random Rants from the crusty ass motherfucking four place in Silver Lake, California. No. Topo Gigi is your friend. Okay. He's your friend. Thank dude. you. Mm. Thank you so much. This is exciting. A lot of people don't know this. A lot of people don't know this, but Tony Hinchcliffe was actually supposed to star in the Queen movie. He was supposed to play Freddie Mercury. Tell him, tell him, Tony. That's actually true. I was supposed to play Freddie Mercury, but uh, they said I look uh, like him only at the end of his life, not in the beginning of his life. Why would it, how did he look like at the end of his life? He looked, he looked uh, AIDS riddled, like right. a riddler. So he could, you could have, they could have brought you in from that. That's true, but they stuck with the, uh, they stuck with the guy that played the rest of them. But it's okay, you know. I look it, more like Freddie Mercury poisoning. <laughs> <laughs> and also, what about the guy that played Elton John? Why are they doing all these fucking biopics, dude? I know. With I, these fucking, but Elton John's still alive. Yeah, it's true. I didn't get that role either, even though I know how to play piano, and uh, a lot of people think I'm gay. Anyways, let's give it up to Tony Hinchcliffe. He is not AIDS Woo. infected. He's just a skinny. Good looking dude from fucking blah 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 Ohio. Which part? Youngstown, Youngstown Ohio. Ohio. The dirtiest fucking town. The most gangster town in fucking Ohio. Tell us about Youngstown. That's right. It's a tough town. Uh, used to be the number one steel producing city in the world. Uh, they, the America built it there because it was covered in clouds and they didn't want other countries' satellites to see that that's where all the steel came from. And then, uh, and then they shut down the steel part of it and it became a dilapidated, gangster-ridden city. A lot of the Italian mafia was there because it's the central meeting point between New York and Chicago. Right, yeah, that's, that's where all the gangs are. What was the name of that place where you go eat barbecue and there's peanuts on the floor? You don't know? Oh, I... You remember? You know, no, no, no. Okay, that's a weird reference. Can we cut that part out, Dave? Oh, Station Square. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you got it? Yeah. Right? You know it? Next to the Funny Bone in Limerick. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ate there. Forgot. <laughs> <coughs> Anyways, <laughs> I recently did my friend Tony's podcast called Kill Bill Tony. Kill Tony. Kill Bill Tony Cliff. No, I know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, it's Kill Tony, and it's on. it's been on for five years yeah. at the Comedy Store. And when I came out, you know... It's my mom's club. It's not my club. It's not my brother's club. It's my mom's club. Just because she's passed doesn't mean she's not there. She's still fucking there. Her pillow is here. I, this is her pillow. She's still lying this pillow. I have wow. my. You can put it on your bosom if you wow. want. Mitzi's Look at here. That. With you. Don't put it by your penis. Just oh. on your stomach. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways. <laughs> yeah, it. she used to chill. You remember she used to yeah. chill with that, right? Yeah. So I took that. That was one All thing right. that I took. Anyways. So when I came out on the podcast last week, oh wait, I forgot to introduce DJ Richie. DJ Richie. Welcome back. Thanks, man. Bill. Greetings. Greetings. <laughs> Koo. Hi, happy Hi, new welcome. year. Yeah, happy, happy new, year. new year. Welcome back, you guys. I did the podcast last this last week, which was awesome. It's fucking, it's a fine oiled machine, or as Tony likes to say. Yep. It's a fine oiled machine. Yep. And um, the first thing I said when I come out is you introduced me as Mitzi Shore's son, what'd you say? I don't know. Yep, what yep, the golden boy of the comedy store, raised at the comedy store, royalty yeah. at the yeah. mecca of comedy clubs. Yeah, I, yeah, I've been the there. Great. Yeah, I've been there since Polish I've been, been there. I was four years old, and when I came out, that teed me up. So I don't want to say, 
I don't want to say put you on blast, not that's not, but just kind of call you out amongst all the other comics kind of call out. But you said to me off camera that a lot of people don't know that it's okay to go visit my mom's tombstone. Right. Because my mom is kind of like the Jim Morrison of comedy. Like, like she's not just my mom. She's the, my, it's the mom to you, to Rogan, to Pryor, to fucking Sam, Letterman, uh, all the comics that went there. She cared about the comedians more than she cared about her fucking family, her fucking me, yeah. pretty much. She actually, she's not even my mom. She's the godmother of comedy, Mitzi Shore, right? Absolutely, 100%. So what I was trying to say to you and all the other comics, now that she's been gone, gone with us physically, emotionally, she's still here, is it's okay to go visit her grave site, yep. you know, which is to, to pay respects to her and um, because the comedy store is her. It bleeds her, it feels her, she's there. Her spirit is there, so now it's time to kind of, people always say thank you Mitzi, so now it's time to go to the grave site and pay your respects to her. If you guys wanna do it, it's open to the public. It's at, um, fuck, what's the, name the, what's the name of the place? It's Mount called, uh, Mount, yeah, Mount Sinai, Mount Sinai. You go there and you just say, where's Mitzi Shore's uh, grave? And you can bring her tombstone and you can bring her flowers and stuff. Mount Sinai is a weird name. It should be Mount Sayonara, right? Because you're saying right. goodbye. Oh. But but you know, <laughs> no, it's, it's the Jewish cemetery and it's right next to Forest Lawn. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Chinese, shut your fucking stupid face. Anyway, so let's play a little music from my mom and then we'll get to this thing started. Right here, play a little music. Great mix. Okay, that's not, that's not the right music to play right that at that moment, but anyways. So we're here, this is, uh, this is uh, it's a video podcast, more, I kind of leans heavily more on, on the visual than the audio. It's also audio, but this is Polly Shore's Random Rants video podcast. It's about a guy, not married, by myself. You can look straight away, you're creeping me out a little bit. No, I'm just right admiring, no. the, you, I've never seen anyone dress like a child with a learning disability before. It's Whoa, oh. bro, that's not cool. Bill, I think it's there. time for a solo, oh, solo, okay. solo. Come on, hurry, hurry, hurry. Right, yeah. Play a solo for him. Oh my goodness. Disability song, disability song, child disabilities. No, play it to him, go, go, what, go. What Chuck E. Cheese band member is this? <laughs> Whoa. Child disability, child disability, child disability, child disability. Oh yeah, wait, stop, stop, stop. Did you meet, I don't, did you meet this guy at your mom's cemetery? Where did you, where'd you find no, this guy? I, no, Starbucks. <laughs> Starbucks. groundskeeper. So what? listen, so Bill, how long you been with the, here, speak right here. How oh, right there? Been, how long you been with the podcast? Oh, several months now, Several right? months. Have you gotten yeah. pussy from it? Oh, it's been, oh, definitely. No, no, no. Definitely. Don't lie to me. Have you gotten pussy from it? Well. Honestly. Well. Honestly. No. Okay, you haven't, but, you, <laughs> but most people are, re people are recognizing you from it, right? Oh, big time. Just yesterday, somebody recognized me. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to get you vagina. That's one of my tasks Ooh. on the show this year is Ooh. to get him a girl to come here to have sex with him. Absolutely. What wow. do you think? Okay. Doable. Okay. Yeah. He, looks like, he, oh, looks, cool. he looks like a spinner. <laughs> right. Thanks, Bill. Give it up for Bill. Right. Bill DeGilio. So, um, so what were we gonna talk about? We were gonna talk about. We weren't gonna talk about the royal wedding. What the fuck were we gonna say? I forgot. There Does was, that guy live here? No, he no, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, he lives. He's down the street. Fuck, I forgot what my first rant was gonna be. What was it? Royal family. No, we fucking we weren't gonna do that. What is it? Wait, I forgot. Rogan. No, no, that's second one. It was your mom's tombstone. Yeah. No, I, but that was just a little bit of it. Oh shit! Freedom. Oh freedom! Freedom! That's freedom! Right. Freedom! Oh. Freedom, freedom. Yeah, so what I wanted to talk about <coughs> is how much I appreciate not being incarcerated. Right. Meanwhile, you have three people slammed in a closet right now behind us. <laughs> well, I didn't say they can't be incarcerated. I said no. I'm not incarcerated. They're right. incarcerated. Right. But, no, what I was saying is I think, I think what society should do is I think they should imprison, imprison us for for uh, at least once a, once, a year, once a year for about a week to put us in prison. Because if you've ever watched prison shows, people that get out of prison, the first thing they want to do is just walk down the street, feel the sun, go to McDonald's, take a shower, all the stuff that we what? 
take for granted. Take for granted. Can you tell us a little bit about what do you feel like the fact that you're free and you and you you haven't you know what I mean? You know, I I, I mean, tell them. I, I'm gonna tell you right now. I go on the road almost every weekend. I get to see different cities and different places. Yeah. Which coming from my background is insane. I you know I never I never get used to it. But there's a part where it really hits me every Sunday or Monday mm. when I'm flying back in and they say that we're making our descent into, uh, you know, beautiful Los Angeles, California. And I always lift my, it's the only time I lift my window mm. shade up on an airplane trip is that last 15 minutes and you see the desert and then mm. you see downtown and the Hollywood sign and it gives me this burst of energy because I love this city so much. Wow. I just love Southern California. And I never feel more free than I do here at home with palm trees. I mean, not even a cloud in the sky, mm. you know what I mm. mean? And it just gives me that even though I'm usually tired from not sleeping a whole Saturday night before right. having the time of my life in a Texas or wherever, right. and you're coming back and you were tired, but so, now you're not tired. So California to you represents freedom. Yeah. It represents the fact that, yep. you know what I mean? The heat, the desert, the rocks, the, the, the open air, the palm trees, just the, the light wind. Yeah. It's just, but what do you think about the fact that m what I'm saying is that people, us fucking Americans, how we take the little things for granted. So don't you think that would actually be a good thing to make people feel that they don't take things for granted? Meaning be incarcerated once a week for a year, just get all your freedoms taken away. I went to Saudi Arabia, yeah. okay, and they took that from me. You know, I couldn't drink, I couldn't do this, like no sex, you couldn't curse on stage, you couldn't do any of that shit. And I actually liked it. Hmm. it I really liked it. At first I was like, fuck this. But then once I got back to America, I just, the little things all of a sudden, you know what I mean? So tell us about just thinking about that for real. You know, we do. We take it for granted. Right. We're the freest country in the world. I mean, look, even people panicking about our current president. Oh, you used to be a reality star. But then again, look how strong our country is. Even with this, this supposed chaos that's happening, here we are. The economy's booming. Less war than the ever. Nub e is, the e nub is booming. What about the nub? Yeah, the, the nub's <laughs> famous. What's the nub? Check it out, right here. <laughs> is that the nub? Yeah. Is that the fucking weasel toe? Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> That's the new one, the weasel toe. That's funny. Okay, sorry, it. go on, of, go on, go on. But of course you love Saudi Arabia, Polly. I mean, you wrap towels around your head when you're here at home. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, shit, I think the TMZ bus found us. Fuck, do you see oh, that shit? Oh, look at that, what is that? That's be crazy. But no, for real though, do you think that's a good idea? I mean, not, not oh, yeah. joking aside, for real, real, real. I think because a, Americans are pigs. I think a go, week. I'm going to go get a sandwich. I'm going to do this. Strip club drinks. Duh, duh, duh. Right. People just like, I want this. I want that. Duh, duh, duh. Remote control. Duh, duh, duh. Take it away for once a week for a year. What do you think? Not only do I think that's a good idea for people to recognize their incredible American freedom, but I also think it'd be a good idea for people's mental health to get away from social media and devices and distractions and meditate with your own thoughts. It helps you uh, yeah. clear your mind and gives you a less toxic outlook on life overall. Yeah, I know Ari like. Shafir, he went overseas for like a couple months and, and just, he c cut out. Yep. Have you ever done that? No, I go to Josh, I go out to the middle of the desert mm. uh, about one, usually twice a year for just one day. And it, that feels like a month long vacation to me. When I go out mm. there, I don't look at my phone for right. 24, 36 hours, 48 hours. I mean, that's just, when, you, when, you're, in the, when you're busy all the time, one little break goes yeah. a long way yeah. for me. That's cool. So let's talk about the royal family. I mean, I did kind of want to talk about it, but just for a second. If you haven't been watching the news lately, King Harry and Meghan are pretty much wanting to fucking get the fuck out of there. And they're wanting to go to where, Tony? Can you tell us what's up with that? I think it's America, right? I think it's America. I fucking America, motherfucking yeah. America. And that's, a, you know, I think that's a perfect segue coming out of freedom. That's the... They, they, you know, that's the opposite of freedom. They were born into a situation that they can't control and they have to follow these rules and mm. regulations. And here they are looking for the things that we take for granted to get lost, be able to disappear a little bit. Yeah, they just want to like, uh, I think they had a big powwow this week with uh, fucking, what's his name? Prince Charles, the bald one that grew bald early. What's his name? Prince Harry. What's his name? I Chinese. Think, I think, he's, I think ironically, his name's Harry. Oh, fuck. No, that's Harry's the baby. Oh. Chinese. Who is it? Prince William. William, William, William. He wants to stay. 
He seems like he wants to stay. He doesn't want to go sh fucking anywhere. Oh, yeah, he wants to be the king. Yeah, he wants to go. But the, but the red-haired ginger boy, he wants to take off and move to fucking Bel Air or some shit. Yeah. Yeah, so. He's running his mouth. He's getting all Downton Blabby. But it's just like. <laughs> <laughs> that was the dumbest joke I've ever made in my life. So. What's a Downton Blabby? Well, because there's a show about royalty called Downton Abbey, and he's oh. talking a lot, so he's Downton Blabby. Oh, Downton Blabby. <laughs> Yeah, Chinese, that was funny, right? Yes. If, Why, he, if he was gaining weight, I would have said he's looking a little Downton Flabby. Right. But um pump. <laughs> if he had a bad attitude, I'd say he's being Downton Crabby. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, so they're leaving. They're wanting to fucking take a hike. And it's kind of like they want to be liberated a little bit. They don't want to be under that thing. But what happens, Tony, if they take away their cash? Then what? Well, see, I'm convinced that this is all a big cover to distract from the pedophilia that uh, the Uncle Andrew or whatever, mm. the Epstein mm. guy. I think that they're just trying to take the press away from the embarrassing situation that they have going on there in the royal family with pedophilia. So I think this is actually all part of a, uh, yeah. a, a master plan to distract yeah and to deflect and I think that if they if this is real and they do go away from it I mean they're gonna end up richer than anybody because you could just have a reality show here in America who's not gonna watch that they'd be you know it's just ridiculous even though there, there's no reason to pay attention to these people we still will mm. I mean look at the Kardashians and mm. uh, you know so you think they'll get their own kind of like Prince Prince Harry fucking reality show like out in Malibu or something? Yeah, absolutely. Netflix, yeah. Netflix will give them $500 million just to put cameras up in the corner of their place like this. And me, yeah, I, I'm on YouTube, so that's cool. Yeah. Here, here, stand right over here. And then what about, so you, you said the word pedophilia. Yep. And when you say that word, you know what that made me think of? What? It made me think of, there's all, everywhere I, everywhere I drive in LA, there's a fucking Pulp movie coming out. Yeah. What the fuck is going on? Bill, are you in the Pope movie? Go stand next to Tony. Oh, okay. T Tony, ask him. But his audio's fucked up, so you got to make sure he speaks in your mic. Oh, oh, how about this? Does he look like he's in the Pope film? He, he does look perfect. like one of the... In fact, he looks like he just poped his pants. <laughs> there he is. So is Bill going to be your new sidekick on Kill Tony? Heck yeah. Really? Oh, so then a can we trade? Can I get you a trade for him and the fucking drummer in the back? Absolutely. Just trade him, right? I'm going to trade Red Band in for Gray Band here. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Chinese! Rant number two! Oh. Chinese! Rant number two. Tony, you can dance if you want. Dance around him. Cool, dance around him. He's your friend, dude. He's your friend, dance around him. Dance around him. All right, all right, cut, 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 cut. Okay, Tone, in the kitchen, come on, bro. Do you want a Diet Coke? I'm okay, thank you. Okay. So let's talk about our friend Joe Rogan. <laughs> okay. How close are you with Joe Rogan? Very now, close. Now, now that he's a multi, multi fucking trillionaire. Yeah, well, Holy I, fuck. I mean, we're really good friends. We have the same, uh, same love for stand-up comedy. We love talking about the strategic side of it, the, uh, the execution, timing, beats, writing, performing, every single element of it. So we have that in common, you know? Mm -hmm. He both. loves steak. Yes, he does. And you know that would be a good uh, that'd be a good way to you know. Get would that be a good way to me get into the Joe Rogan pack? Like if I delivered steaks to his house? Yeah, absolutely. You'll have to figure something out. You'll yeah. have to dress a little bit differently too. I, you, you you dress too comfortably to hang out with someone like Joe Rogan. You're right. a little too comfortable in your own skin. <laughs> You need to, you need to like be. Uh, There's got to be some militant about me. Like get back to in the army now or some shit, right? Or well, I don't know about that. I just think maybe like a little bit more like uh, normal. You know, mm. clothes that fit you properly. Like maybe, maybe you know, don't you know, a little less colorful. Like I mean, you're a little bit just wild. You're out. You're like out there. Right. You know. So what that I mean? doesn't fit into that crew. Right. You just got to be cooler. Yeah. You, know what I you mean? gotta be cooler. I mean, you've always been cool, but now you're like a little bit like eccentric, you know? Mm. An eccentric. Well, I should change my name to William. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. William Shore. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, go on. Keep going. I'm learning. I think there's other things you could do. You could be more manly. You know mm. what I mean? I mean, <laughs> I mean, you have this little, you know, this little bachelor apartment. You have diet cokes, and you have, you know, what I mean. You, have, you look like you only eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Right. Like, <laughs> ah, shit. You have like this <laughs> childish. I have my Filipino neighbors. Hi, Sona. So. <laughs> See, that's something else. He can't, he can't he do can't, that. He can't relate to being able to yell at his neighbors from where he lives. He, right. He's, he has a much better setup than this. So he's like the guru of podcasts. Absolutely. He's kind of like the Bikram yoga guy, but without, the, uh, without fondling the babes. That's true. Because he's like the head guy. That's true. And you guys all surround him. Yep. He What's that a, like? You guys are like, I don't want to say bees to the buzzard, but you guys are all like his crew. I mean, he fucking hooked you guys up. Well, I think we I mean, all- you hooked yourself up, but I mean, but he kind of, um, kind of like Sam did me, like Kennison back in the early days, where he took me under his wing. You know, I think yeah. we, I think we all push each other. Mm. I think it's a uh, we all inspire each other when we hear someone else's new jokes, and you're laughing in the back of the room. You're like, man, you know, I want to mm. write another new joke. I want to make him laugh like how he made me laugh, and. Mm. So it's sort of like a unit. I don't think it's It's just... like a think tank. Right. Sort of. It's like a it's like a laugh think tank where we push each other and uh, inspire one another. But yeah, I mean, he's the man. He takes he takes his uh, he takes his regimen uh, very seriously, but not too seriously. You right. know what I mean? So yeah. like he has a very he's serious He's got a sense of humor about it. No doubt about it. And he uses yeah. all that experience and he talks about your mother being the backbone of all of that, you know? She used to put him up after Richard Pryor, and, you know, it's not an easy position to be in. People want, like, a lot of people, I feel like, want easy spots at the comedy store, mm. and they think they want to go up after, just with momentum, and they want to do good, and this and that, but really, the thing at the comedy store it's is... not doing good. Not right? doing good. Yeah. It's getting better. It's, right. If you could do both... If you could do good and get better at the same time, then have a have a drink, and celebrate. Then, and then, because I remember when his podcast, you know, uh, hit, it was right around when, right, right after Mark Maron. Mark Maron used to have the biggest podcast. Remember? Yeah. I yeah. mean, at the beginning, he was the puck. He was like the Dink Cook of MySpace. Yeah, exactly. Right? He, he was the first guy. Yeah, he tapped into it first. Yeah, and then Rogan came right after. Yeah, I think it they were doing it at the same time. I think Mark's got a little bit of more buzz first. I think it had more press around it. But yeah. I think Joe's is more sustainable, refillable, uh, more uh, engaging, yeah. more conversational. It's not just an interview. You know, yeah. they can really talk about anything. And then, and then he, he hooked up, we're not hooked up, but you and, and Ari, because Ari I used to hang out with a lot, and now he doesn't return my call. Because <laughs> he doesn't have a cell phone anymore. You he know? doesn't. Uh... But when Joe Rogan texts him, he calls him right back. Yeah. I, Ari used to open for me. Right. And then I started looking like this, and he stopped what? Calling you back. Right. Because we set it up the joke. All right. Anyways, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Ari's the best. Yeah. Um, and then Bert Kreischer, where the fuck did this guy come from? Yeah. Because he's not a store guy. Right. He is now. No, I know, but he didn't start at the store. You've been at the store for what? Ten years. I've been there for twelve and a half. Twelve years. years. So he's been there a year, two, couple of years. Yep. So what do you think? And this is serious. Uh huh. Did you ever meet my mom? Uh, yes, for sure. Yes, so this I used to like, talk to her every day on the phone. Oh, when she'd call in. Yep. What'd she say? Put on, put Tommy on the phone. That and sometimes we'd talk for a second. She once told me I was the best phone guy since Jim Carrey. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. How about that? That's that's a good that's a good thing. It's so my, then Bert Kreischer comes in. Uh huh. Right now he's been knighted by Joe. Yep. Pretty much, right? Yep. And he goes on stage with what? Without his shirt on? Yeah, what's that about? <laughs> you like it? I can't. I cannot comment on that. Why? <laughs> Why? Be honest. Um, it's, you know what I mean? We all have different styles. We all have different things. He's wildly successful. That's yeah, he's great huge. for him. He's huge. He's massive. There's a lot of people that are into that type of thing and mm. uh, he's doing great mm. and that's awesome and I, what do you think I, I love mom? Bert he's a really and you know what's crazy is like I think there's a bad reputation about taking your shirt off on stage but I do think he's one of the answers to that a lot of the stuff he does is very smart very funny 
Um, I just think taking your shirt off on stage has a sort of a bad reputation to it. And maybe he's trying to help peop other comedians that take their shirts off as well. Or maybe he's also being trying to be liberated a little because he's kind of chubby. Right. And it's kind of, it's acceptance for the chubby belly. Exactly. Right. What do you think my mom, and uh, to get, without being trying to be funny, without be, trying to be quick, yeah. like just think of Mitzi Shore. You're Mitzi Shore right yep. now. Okay. okay, you're Mitzi Shore. Uh -huh. So go back 20, 30, 40 years. Yep. Burt Kreischer is on the stage at the comedy store. <laughs> I can't believe you're about to ask me this question. <laughs> no, because it's her club. Go ahead. It's not my fucking club. I want to hear it. Ask okay. it. Okay. So Burt Kreischer's on stage. Yeah. And he's, <laughs> and he's taking his shirt off. You're Mitzi. What do you say? Get off! <laughs> get on and put it back on or get off the stage. Right. That's exactly. We all know that's what she yeah, would say. She would say. There's so, no doubt so about that. With Bert, it's does, disgusting. Yeah. Does Bert know? Does, does Bert know that, or do you think he even cares? I don't think he cares. He doesn't care. For sure. Right. Well, that's too and bad. And now at this yeah. point, you know, his brand is that. You right. know what I mean? So yeah, I, but it's the store. Like I don't go into the store and go, "Hey, bro." Uh, uh, I try to do my right. jokes. You know. Right. You know, that's like, I do that shit on the road. A hundred percent. The store is the star. And like I... And the store is Mitzi Shore. A hundred percent. And like I said earlier, I think a lot of people that don't know the store and know the DNA of it, they all want to do good. Mm. They all want to tweet or Instagram and brag about being part of it. But it's not about just doing good. It's about mm. Do it as better. Tommy! It's about taking Let me chances. hear you say it, Tommy. Well, it's about growing. growing. Okay? It's about learning. It's well, about evolving. Yeah, that's how it's supposed to be. And All right, she's the queen. She had me do it. Right. Being put in a hard position, having to dig your way out. I mean, Adam puts me up after monsters every single time. I mean, I'm... I, I, I don't think there's many people that love following Rick Ingram there because he just destroys with uh, Yeah, let's work. talk about Rick Ingram. He's yeah. so fucking funny, dude. He's so funny. It's, it's shocking. So what do we do with him? I tried to do a special with him. He, you know, he's just like, hmm. you know, what do you want to do with him? I don't he's know. He's so good. I think that's up to him. Yeah, it's up to him. Yeah. Okay, so we'll talk about uh, Tom Segura. Yep. So Joe kind of knighted Segura as well a little bit. Yep, for yeah, sure. Yeah, kind of teed him up, right? That's pretty sick. Yep. He's, yeah. a, he's good great. For... He's great. Writes a lot. Executes jokes. He's just and a... you guys help each other out. That's right. That's Every... nice. Everybody helps each other. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty close family. Yeah. And then there's Ari, Ari Shafir. I mean, he's one of the true backbones. I mean, that's one of the real, you know. But he, Joe really knighted, uh, Joe really knighted Ari as well, huh? Right. And that's a, that's, that, that was big. That's yeah. a real, I mean, but that, that, that's a guy that has it all. You know what I mean? That's a real stand up comedian that really, really takes chances you know you don't see any punchline coming it's all beautiful art you think he's gonna go low and he goes high you think he's gonna go high and he goes low he hits you where you don't see it coming did, and, did michelle uh, obama steal that from him no that's a different thing oh, i'm okay. saying that he does the opposite yeah he does the opposite and he came out early if you guys didn't know this yeah. he came out in a uh the racist what is it called the racist, the amazing race the amazing racist which is a very funny video where basically he goes to home depot and he's in the truck and he says what does he say he picks up uh mexicans outside of a home depot so and then he right. asks them if he, they want work and then he puts them in the back of the truck and he takes them to the immigration center <laughs> <laughs> and they start running that's hilarious. They, they <laughs> That's hilarious. That's yeah. very Republican, dude. Yeah, got the party started right? for him for sure. So you got, so you got you, you got Joe, you got Ari, you got uh, Andrew Santino. Andrew Santino. He's the ginger guy, right? He's great. Yep. Yeah. Why is he so great? He, he again, you know, these guys they write, you mm. know, they execute. He doesn't just lean on his good looks and beautiful red hair to mm. get him through. He's always writing really, really funny stuff. And, you know, it's a certain type of uh, certain type of topics and approaches on comedic mm. material nowadays that yeah. you, you just don't get on these old cable networks or even a, uh, 
even huge streaming sites like Netflix and Amazon, they're limiting. There's certain things you, know, you just can't I was gonna, cover, and I don't think people notice it. But when you go see a real raw live show, yeah. you can uh, you can have a lot more fun. And it's, then, it's all, it feels more dangerous. It's more fun. You know, so so back to being knighted by Joe. I just want to throw this throw mm -hmm. this to you, you guys. So you got all those guys being knighted by Joe. Well, I have I'm my own Joe. You know, I have my own thing. I got my guys too that I knighted. Yeah, how are they doing? Not good. <laughs> <laughs> we got Jesus, Sandy. Fucking Brenton, all homeless. Uh huh. They have fucking. They're losing followers. Yeah. So I mean, what do I do, dude? How do we do it? Can you maybe since Joe knighted you, you can knight me, Sandy, and my crusty crew? Well, I mean. Well. Uh, Say it is Tommy. Yeah, that's a tough situation, Polly. I really don't know how to help you. You're a special case. What kind of case? I mean, you know, you are. Uh, you are one of the. Um, I mean, you've been famous now for decades i don't mm. know i think i think people i think people just i think you have a certain amount of respect but i think uh i don't know it's hard in this world to reinvent and evolve and mm. i think you've done a good job at it i just think you're you're one big boom away from you know a real rebirth like mm. it's almost like christoph waltz you know i love christoph waltz me too i don't know who the fuck he is but i like that name right oh <laughs> god that, that, damn that was it. the uh, that was the main nazi in um oh. uh in uh yeah we don't like glorious bastards we don't like him but it was a fiction here, let's you, play no. number three no he wasn't number three he wasn't a real nazi okay here come here come here right here stand right there that's okay. good Okay, cut it, cut it, cut it. Here, speak for a sec right there. Just speak to them. Say whatever Hello, you want. Hello, everyone. It's me again, Tony Hinchcliffe. And I'm excited to be here in Pauly Shore's apartment. It's almost like Mr. Rogers, but for creepers. That's right. Absolutely, it is. It's like uh, instead of changing his shoes, he changes your shoes. Right, right. So, so let's talk about older comics versus newer comics. Okay. Because it's just like older music. Here, stand right here. So okay. It's good. Is that good, Dave? Dave? Uh, looks pretty good, yeah. Yeah. So give me your inclination about that. Older comics and newer comics? Yeah. The differences? Or, uh, what, just because you always, you always hear like music. Oh, Led Zeppelin was the best. The Beatles were the best. The Stones were the best. And then you got newer bands people that the young kids maybe not know that. So it's the same with comedians. Mm -hmm. You got Pryor. You got Carlin, you got all these older guys, and then now you got, you know, Rogan and Burr and, and all these other guys, Ali Wong and Whitney and Dalia and all that. So, because I've seen it, I've seen it more than anyone. I've seen all the decades. Yeah. Yeah. You so, have? Yeah, so go on. I mean, uh, we have to, of course, you know, pay our respects to our elders, the, some of the goats, Richard Pryor, uh, George Carlin. I mean, come on. These people are monsters. And I think if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be where we're at today with stand-up comedy being so wildly successful. These, so, are, these are the guys that influenced your Bill Burrs, your Louis C.K.'s, your Joe Rogans. They were once kids watching these guys saying, oh my God, I want to do that. How do I do that? So who do you think's better, the older guys or the newer guys? Uh, I think that's... It's kind of like saying Michael Jordan or Steph Curry or... What, what, right, what, what right. What do you think? It's, it's, or, or, or LeBron, sorry. It's oh. a tough situation. It goes both ways. I think Richard Pryor's probably the greatest of all time. Okay, but I, so I you think, got, wait, wait. So you got Chappelle now, Richard Pryor. Who's better? If you had to choose. If you I, had to choose. I, I think... Well, realistically, I think Chappelle's a different case. I think he's the greatest of all time. Actually, I do. Yeah, I got Chappelle winning that because yeah, that, oh, bigger than Pryor. I don't know if he's bigger than not bigger, Pryor. but better. I think he's probably better than Pryor. I think Pryor probably uh, had to work out stuff a little bit more, a lot of bit more probably. Whereas Chappelle can take something that happened that day and do twenty minutes on mm. it that night and be unbelievably. Hilarious so about you got, it. I've seen it so many times. He's so you, just a freak. You got Sam Kennison, Bill Burr. Yep. I'm going Bill Burr on this one. Sam Kennison, again, <laughs> one of the greatest ever, but 
We're talking about laughs per minute. We're talking about originality, <laughs> creativity, and really wait, pushing Wait, wait, why it. the fuck are you laughing, Chinese? What's so funny? What happened? You're punching ponies. Oh, okay. Sorry. Keep going. Sorry. I think Go there's on. no doubt about it that, uh, that, I mean, if we watch them both side by side, even in their prime, while I respect the hell out of what Sam was doing and it was a different show, uh, I mean, Bill Burr is just undeniable. Right. You know, I mean, you can't even compare Bill Burr to anybody else. It's, it's weird to me when people do. Like, oh, you're no Bill Burr. Like, it's like, no shit. The guy's obsessed with getting a massive amount of laughs in a short amount of time and huge laughs, not mm. giggles. And it's just a different ball game he's playing. He's like the Bill Belichick of stand-up comedy. So you're basically pretty much saying that the younger comics are better than the older comics. However, wait, wait, wait. Don't, yeah. don't answer. Stop for yeah. a second. Yeah. Think about what you just said. Because yeah. what you just honestly said is that the newer guys are better than the older guys. But wait, wait. Take three seconds and th think about it for a sec. You just said that. Three, two, one. <laughs> so without the older guys, they would never be able to do what they're doing. But yes, the game is more evolved, just like the NBA, right. just like Steph Curry, just like every analogy possible. Without the forefathers, it wouldn't be possible. But now the game has evolved. It's more laughs per minute. Here, it's come on. More Let's keep talking. Voice. He's excited. It's, uh, Here, keep talking to that camera. That's good. Keep speaking. Keep ranting, bro. You know, this the, is great. The different styles. Hey, I mean, you guys, Tony's we the to, best ranter so if far. We were to compare, yeah. uh, if we yeah, were to compare going. the old blue collar guys, like if you compare, what are you going to compare? Jeff Foxworthy and Theo Vaughn? Give me a break. Theo Vaughn would destroy any of the blue collar guys in a in a in a stand up But what about off. your friend John Caparulo? Come on. Um we're not really that close, Paulie. Oh, sorry. Yeah, he doesn't okay. ever communicate with me. He barely talk to me when I work the door at the comedy here, store. Here, let's sit, sit down right here. Okay. Here we got Topo Juju. He's cool. Play some music for a second just so we can we're going to we're going to wrap this up in a second. You can dance if you want to. You don't want to dance with us? You're not feeling the dance? You just want to look straight? Huh? Holy shit, he's putting on the glasses. He's putting on the glasses. Cut, cut, cut. So, if you guys want to visit my mom's tombstone, it's at Mount Sinai, it's in the valley. It's, oh, I guess it's open to the public, I don't fucking know. But if my mom meant something to you, whether you met her or you didn't meet her, whether you heard about her, didn't hear about her, she started the comedy store with my father, Sammy Shore. He's also buried at another cemetery by, he got the shitty cemetery, he got the one by the fucking freeway, yeah. by the 405, that's not cool, but we'll talk about that. <laughs> Um, no, he's around, but go visit my mom. I know you guys lo love you and Joe and everyone. Mitzi did this, Mitzi did that. Well, now it's time to still visit her. Yep. Still visit her. Let everyone know. Mount Sinai in the valley right next to the forest lawn. And if you read her tombstone, it's beautiful. It basically says, thank you, uh, Mitzi, you know, my mom, blah, 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 and, and for starting, the, uh, being responsible for comedy in the 20, 21st century. Oh. And, and it's just a beautiful thing that we wrote. So on Is that in it, English yeah. or like Yiddish or something? No, it's in, yeah, it's in, no, I know most of the Jew, Jewish <laughs> cemeteries have their, no, it's in English. But when me and my brothers were building the tombstone, one thing we agreed on. Whoa, uh, yeah, you guys yeah, agreed yeah, on something? Yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> uh, we, we, we wanted to make sure that the comedians were on there too. Oh. So when you read it, you see that the comedians, that's you guys, your name's not fucking mentioned. Right. But the comedians are there, too, because she's not just my mom. She's the godmother of comedy. So do you want to th say anything else? I mean, uh, without, without her, I don't think people realize, no matter how many times you hear it, without her, the, it's a totally different world we live in. Comedy isn't as big so without her legacy. And uh, the nurturing so nature you're saying, So of, you're saying that the comedy store is better than helium? Oh yeah. The com but you but it's before you it, yeah but before you did the youngers was better than the older. So in right. this case, the older is better than case, the younger. A hundred percent. There's nothing. There's no place <laughs> at all on the planet like the comedy store. There's nowhere even close. Not even as a comedy club. 
but as a landmark to me and to a home to me. I never feel more comfortable anywhere else. Uh, I never felt destiny more anywhere else. You can feel the energy in the walls outside just approaching it. It, uh, it gives me the chills. It makes my heart flutter. There's no place like home and there's no place like the world famous comedy store that's on like the, the Sunset Strip. Yeah, but that's like when you say it's no place like home, you're saying it's like what? The comedy store. No, but you're saying it's like the Emerald City. The for Wizard Timmy. of Oz, who yeah. was Mitzi Shore. She was the one behind the curtain. Yep. Making it all happen. So thank you guys for tuning in. Come yep. on, play that song that you always play at the end. I really like it. And I want to thank us all. I want to thank us all for being here today. Tony, I want to thank, thank you for you. being here. Thank you. Um, I want to thank Richie and Koo. Thank you for making time for me. This thank is you. what this is how we're living, you guys. We're living moment to moment, day by day, because we take days and time for granted, but that's the one thing that we don't have. We're all gonna end up like my mother, like your mother, like your grandparents. We all end up in the grave or dusty or whatever it is, right? <laughs> yeah, we all dusty. fucking go, yep. we fucking go. So I want us all to just take a big breath today. Just be like, and say we're here right now. This moment will never be the same. We will never have this again. And you know what I'm saying, right? Does yeah. that make sense? Hundred percent. I mean, fuck, dude. Take time to uh, focus. You know, get off your phones for once in a while and just breathe. Sit in the dark. Listen to the sounds of a fireplace. Find meditative sounds on your Amazon or on your iPhone when you're relaxing or when you want to chill out or sleep in or go to bed early. You know, you, help yeah. yourself. Light a candle. Yeah. Do the small things that can help you relax more than usual get an air purifier yeah. put your fan on take your pants off relax yeah and 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 like i say every time i wake up in the morning i say to myself thank you god for another day thank you god for giving me another day because when you turn 50 <coughs> excuse me when you turn 50 and your parents die okay and you're by yourself and you're trying to look into the future you realize shit at some point i'm gonna go too so I want to thank you, God, for not giving me cancer and all this fucked up shit that so many people are stricken with every fucking day. Thank you. Serious. We're fucking lucky. And we get to make people laugh. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you so much, everybody. It's going to be an awesome 2020. I'll be in Kansas City at the Improv this weekend. And uh, Paul, at Polly Shore, hit me up at Random Rants. Tony. I'm Tony Hinchcliffe. Kill Tony is every Monday at the Comedy Store. We stream it live on YouTube, straight from Kill Tony. I'm touring all over, Calgary, Tempe, a bunch of places. Go to TonyHinchcliffe.com for tickets. I'm Tony Hinchcliffe on social media. Yeah. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, thank you. And I heard you're going to be taking your shirt off up in um, Nebraska, right, next week? You were doing that yourself? Uh, no, that's going to be Calgary, but oh, Calgary. I might take my shirt off. If anybody wants to see it, I, just yell, take your I, shirt I, off okay. at okay. the end of my set. Do your thing, man. Oh, yeah. Okay. I am Richie TV at Richie TV. Everyone gets the promote their thing. R-I-C-H-W-E-T-W-E-V-W-E. We're all equal, yeah. Go on, cool. Hi, I'm at Esther Cuckoo on Twitter and Instagram. And I'll be at Yuck Yucks in Calgary January 24th. Bill, met him at Starbucks. I love him. You know what I mean? He's awesome. Bill, you promoting? At Happiest Hour TV on Instagram, guys. Love you guys. Bye. Wave bye. Bye. Bye.